life as is known has been interrupted. The final piece of the puzzle has been placed. Those who before time were ordained to soar above the kings of the earth have emerged from the shadows of carnality and with boldness have they taken their high place. As they establish their hold on the mountain of finance, that which has been known of them in the spirit begins to manifest to the marvel of all that behold. By them the lion of the tribe of Judah roars over the kingdoms of this world, turning nations to his marvelous light. These are the very setting of the foundation of the world were predestined and called after the order of Caleb to scale heights unknown and paths not trodden before. With an uncommon glory, they ride upon the majestic white horse, flying the banner of this eternal kingdom and ushering the charge of Christ into greater depths of the Father. The order of Caleb Occupy till I come. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Um, children of God, I thank God for the opportunity to be able to speak with you. This is a very new chapter, not just a new year, but a new chapter that even began for some of you, you already know that this chapter began actually last year. Uh, last year, towards the end of last year, this is when the chapter, this new chapter began specifically for you as a partner of the living God. Now I have a word for you, dear partners, um, and concerning certain things that the Lord is passionate where you are involved. There are about three main missions that the Lord wants to communicate to you, and I will be sharing with them, uh, them to you shortly. Hallelujah. The first one is um, understand the mission of the army. You are an army. That is what, something you need to understand. A financial army. And you need to understand the mission of the army and to be part of it. When you think, when you get a soldier and you, uh, or someone, any other person, probably not a soldier, and you send him out into a field or into a bush, if you do not tell him exactly what he's supposed to do, what is expected of him in that bush, he can do so many things. One thing is he may decide to go hunting and you see him hunting in the bush and then he will get some prey and you'll be, probably he will be very excited with himself. Or as a farmer, he will think as a farmer if you took him from farming and he will go on and uh, you know, clear a portion of the bush and start, uh, you know, uh, start cultivating. But if he cultivates and he gets a good fruit and brings it to you and then you say, no, this is not what I sent you for. You are actually a soldier. You are supposed to go in that bush because there are, there are rebels in that bush and you fight them and push them out. You see? So this is something that God wants you to understand as a partner of God, as a partner with the ministry. That right now it's not a time for farmers. It's not a time for all this. He's saying that you need to understand that this is an army. The ministry is an army and there is a specific mission and mandate that has been given. And there are certain things we've been given to conquer. Number one, certain things we've been given to advance into and attack. There are certain strongholds of darkness that we've been sent to attack. And you are very key. You are a key part in this army. Hallelujah. We sing a song that every, every prayer is a powerful weapon. Strongholds come tumbling down and down and down. We sing every prayer. And usually we know that that happens in the intercession. Now I want to change this and say every cent you give, every, every giving is a powerful weapon. You need to see yourself in that regard. Praise Jesus. This brings me to the second point. Actually, before I go to the second point, let me just read for you 2 Corinthians. Praise the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter, I believe, um, let me just read it here. Hallelujah. We are an army of the living God. And uh, he says in 2 Corinthians, 
that no man goes to war at his own expense. That is Second Corinthians, sorry, not Second Corinthians, First Corinthians chapter 9 verse 7. He says, who goes to warfare anytime at his own church? Who plants a vineyard and does not eat of the fruit thereof? Or who feeds the flock and eats not the milk of the flock? Now, many times we have looked at other things, and I'm going to mention it, but the mindset here is that God wants you to understand that he's sending you to a warfare. He's sending you to a warfare. And this warfare will require you, as a partner, to plant a vineyard unto God with your giving. With your giving, definitely you shall eat of the fruit of your giving, but also, it's very important, I'm going to come to it in the second point, and then he says, feed a flock. Now, there's, there's a flock of people out in the world who do not know the truth. Who do, there's a flock of believers who do not know the words of this life, the prophecies that have been given here. Now, the prophecies that have been given here, the kind of prophecies, the caliber of prophecies that have been given are strategic. They are not just things happening. They are also on how uh, the church needs to attack the enemy. And the enemy has arisen as a flood, and when the spirit raises, uh, uh, lifts up a standard against him, it's you he's lifting up. It's you he's lifting up. So are you lifting up? As, are you being lifted up? Are you raising up as a, uh, uh, as a partner to what the Lord is doing in this hour? Because the enemy is moving. And there are people, there are flocks out there who have not heard the word. The scripture says in the book of uh, Ro uh, Romans, how shall the preachers go unless they be sent? You are the sending power. You are the sending regime. You are the sending unit. You are the sending regiment of this army. You are the legion that is supposed to send through your giving. Then he goes on and says that um, who, uh, who feeds the flock and it's not of the milk of the flock. Praise the Lord. There are certain things that we are supposed to put out there. Even to not, now there is sending to the non-believers, but then there is sending to our fellow believers. There are very many believers there who are looking for the voice of the prophet. The voice of the prophet is in your midst, dear partner. And you need to arise and feed the believers, the flock of believers out there, with the prophecies. There are certain things that I've mentioned, certain things, prophecies that God wants to put out there into the hand of everybody. Now you are key. I was asking the Lord that why don't I take, undertake this on my own? And he said that uh, no, this is for the partners. So this is something I want you as partners to understand. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, 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 I'll mention the second point. The second point here is shift from giving for self. Let me give so that I, I get this give and I get this. He's saying put away childish things. The enemy, the enemy when he, the enemy is giving, he doesn't give for that kind of reason. People who are pumping money into the, uh, the dark agenda are not giving to get anything out of it. They are giving to advance a cause, to advance a kingdom, to advance an agenda, to advance principles. And until our giving comes to that place where we understand that we are gi our giving is as an army, not as an individual. There's a reason why a, a, the lowest unit or in an army is called a unit. It comes from the word unity. And that means that these people have one understanding, they are of one mind. And this is the army that I want you to become into as a partner. Praise the Lord. So we need to give from a place of an army where we are attacking, giving in such a way that our weapons, and uh, 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 Bishop Jack has mentioned this many times, where you look at your finances as a weapon in the hands of God. So shift from the place of the mindset of, let me give so that I get. Let me give so that I make a get a breakthrough that is important and good but how, but what will happen when in the larger scheme of things what is more important I, is it not the souls of god you will give and get that is a given it is a given on any, on, 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 on any level but you see the problem with that kind of thinking is that after you've got then what you stop giving now the enemy does it cannot be defeated by people who are coming under such power give get give get that is not the, enemy, uh, the enemy's power. The enemy has already lifted his, uh, he, he has raised up a flood, he has come as a flood. He gives, the likes of Soros, they give not to get anything anymore. And Soros is not even the wealthiest man in the world. 
so he's not giving to get any more wealth. The likes of uh, you know, the other seed of the serpent gets. They don't give to get. Now you tell me they give because they have. No. They're not the wealthiest. Bezos is. Jeff Bezos. They're not getting anything. They're giving to, uh, to, to, you know, to advance an agenda and the kingdom and to enforce it on new people who want to give just to get. You need to go above that. Praise the Lord. I want you to move as a partner to a kingdom-centered sort of giving. That the kingdom, the kingdom needs to be expanded and your part is important. The kingdom will only go as far as your participation, your financial participation. So, in light of this, number one, normalize giving. Number two, normalize stretching. Number three, normalize multiplying. Multiplying your giving, but also multiplying yourself. If you are a partner there and you are not doing the work of evangelism, that is not good. Find another partner. Find someone who is not partnering and speak to them. Ask them, are you partnering? Share the word of partnership. There is no army which ever thrives without recruiting. Every time you see here in Uganda, the UPDF is always recruiting more soldiers, even when they, we are not at war. That is the nature of the armies. So if an army is not recruiting, that means it's endangering itself. It's not pro prospering. It's not expanding. It's not advancing its kingdom. I want you to become recruiters. Go out there and evangelize. The Samaritan woman, the moment she had Jesus, first thing she did was to go into the city. And when she went into that city, what did she do? She preached the gospel. Come and see the man who has told me everything. Have you preached the gospel? Have you show, shared these things, that we are, we, we are, the, the prophetic updates? Find someone. They don't need to be in the same church. They don't need to be in the same ministry. Find someone and, you know, share with them and tell them, come and partner. I have seen a man who can do great things. I have seen a man who can prophesy, who can speak in the name of God and things happen. Come. Let us get this blessing. Learn how to share the gospel and evangelize in the area of giving. Multiply yourself. One person has done this that I know. A wonderful lady in our midst. I will not mention her name. She came together. They came together, two of them, two, two of these ladies. And their giving is kind of modest. Very modest, interestingly. But they, are, they, they did something surprising. They found someone who is not in the church and they said, you know what? We found a man who has the word from God come. And they, you know, this person became a giver, joined them in, a, in, you know, in an army of giving. And the kingdom has done great things in that, in, through, through them. So I want you, dear partner, to start doing these things. Normalize giving, normalize stretching, and normalize multiplying this, you know, the, the number of givers. We want more people to be part of this. Praise the Lord. There are so many things that God has said that this ministry needs to do in a very short time. And it, you will determine. Because I asked him, says, can I do this myself? And he said, no. Give it to the givers, the, the, the partners. So this is your responsibility. Give as a kingdom, someone advancing the kingdom, someone attacking the kingdom of darkness. Amen? Hallelujah. I know you are going to listen to this. I know, and listen, enter partnership. It doesn't matter whether you start with a small sum, it's okay where you start. What we want right now is consistency. Make it a monthly, make it a, a weekly. We want consistency. This is between you and God, but it's important. We want consistency. There is a room for one-off givings, but if you are going to be an army, in, the, in this army, then you need to be key. You need to, attain, you know, you need to be diligent in the trainings. It's not one training, then you go away, then you... No, you need to be on. So connect and remain connected. Praise the Lord Jesus. I will share one more scripture and then I will end. Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9 shares with us a man who is a Gentile, interestingly. And Jesus goes to him and he speaks to this man. And uh, Luke 7, and verse, from verse 5. And the Lord says, you know, th this man had issues. And when he heard of Jesus, he sent out to the elders of the Jews. He sent the elders of the Jews. He was a Gentile, so Jesus couldn't go to him. He was a Gentile. And he asked Jesus that he would come and heal his servant. And when they came to Jesus, they besought him instantly, saying, This, he was worthy for whom you should do this. And he said, For he loved our nation, and he has built us a synagogue. A non believer loved the kingdom and was building synagogues, expanding the, the kingdom. How many churches? 
as your giving built partner? How many churches has your giving built, uh, you know? How many souls have been won because you finance a mission? So stop giving from a place of comfort. Start giving from a place of combat. Not comfort, but combat. Repeat it after me. Not comfort, but combat. Start giving aggressively from a place of combat. We need to see more of this grace multiplied out there. And the Lord has clearly said, it is the partners. Praise Jesus. I know that uh, you know very well that God gives seed to the soul. When you determine to give, he will give you the seed. Now, just pray and stretch your hands towards me. Father everlasting, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I release this grace that transforms and causes a metamorphosis of your people from a place where they are giving out of comfort to a place where they are giving in a, with the mindset of combat. Their finances shall become weapons in the, in the hands of the kingdom. The kingdom of righteousness shall go forth and expand because of these your people, this your army. And I thank you that you are making all grace to abound towards them, both to give and also to abound towards them, that they may eat of the milk of the flock, that they may harvest of the vineyard, harvest souls and harvest personally, that they may harvest and bring in a great harvest unto you, O Lord. Thank you, Father Everlasting, because we have great and militant givers. In Jesus' holy name, amen. You are blessed.